You know what? As we've been taking a trip down memory lane during the last couple of weeks, we've looked at several offerings from Robots in Disguise 2001. And then we jump ahead a couple of years to Armada. And we looked at Hotshot, who was kind of lackluster, even though he was a newer offering. Well, maybe the Armada line can actually redeem itself, hopefully, when we look at this. That's right. This is Demolisher and Blackout. And this little duo is going to be our focus this time around in the latest Got Bot True review. Hey, one, hey, all. Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gapot. As always, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, and light them up while you're at it, baby. And that's right, hit that notification bell, please, because it helps me out a ton. It lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor, Transformers, Collectors, NL, and the Autobot family. Have a look for me on Patreon and check out our items on Teespring while you're at it. And have a look for me everywhere across social media, man. All those links and more down in the description. And this is Demolisher with his Minicon partner, Blackout. And I said in the intro that I was really impressed with the characters and the items that we've looked at from the original 2001 Robots in Disguise, or Car Robots if you prefer, line. They were done so well and kind of so far ahead of their time. And then we looked at Hot Shot. Now, granted, I'm not a Unicron Trilogy dude, and I'm really not a Hot Shot fan. Probably because he's so close to Bumblebee. We all know I'm not a huge Bumblebee fan. But I'd like to be able to find some things there that I enjoy. And maybe, just maybe, Demolisher can actually be the offering that does that. Hopefully, maybe, we're about to find out when we head over to the table and take a closer look at this guy. And yes, indeed, here we have Demolisher and his Minicon partner, Blackout. Blackout is actually plugged into the front of Demolisher at the moment. We'll look at him a little bit later. The two of these guys are sort of a, a bit of an odd couple with Demolisher being kind of, uh, what, loyal, maybe to a fault at times, to the Decepticon cause, even if not always loyal to Megatron. And then we have Blackout, who is very uh, independent-minded. He's always looking for action, but he's more true to himself than he is to anyone else. And of course, that makes these two guys kind of get at odds sometimes. Now, I'm not a huge fan, and I never have been of the Unicron Trilogy, but there are a few bright spots in Demolisher, at least for me, was definitely one of them. There's a lot of layers to his character, and it, the way he developed throughout the series, I thought was kind of fantastic. Uh, the plastic representation here was the very first one that we had for Demolisher. It was reused a few times. By the end of, this, of Armada, it kind of came out again in a red uh, deco to match the animation. There was a like brighter green deco that came out during Cybertron, I wanna say, and then one that I would argue was probably the most animation accurate, arguably, that came out, I think, toward the end of Energon, which seemed like a weird addition to add to that line, but hey, whatever. Was this actually good enough to kind of warrant so many reuses. Well, we're gonna find out. I can say this, he rolls really great. The turret, it can turn all the way around. The blasters, they can move up and down. The Minicon can unplug from the front. And you'll notice there's a Minicon port here that's red. And if we swivel this around, there's a Minicon port over here that's not red. Originally, my understanding is that they were both supposed to be red. My understanding, again, and I could be wrong, is that this one over here, I think, is the one that can be used to um, activate a firing mechanism for two of these rockets. The other two, I think they're just static, maybe? No, no, maybe they can come out. Maybe they can still come out, but they just don't have the firing mechanism. Maybe I'm talking about the wrong side. I'm really, I'm not sure. Let me put this one in. We're going to double check that right now. We're going to check that right now. No, they, they do come out on both sides, but only one of them has the firing mechanism. And it might actually be this side over here. I'm not sure, but only one of the sides has that. 
Anyway, we'll worry about that later. Let's get the blackout first. So a heads up before we kind of move along, because I know that some of the fanboys are gonna be freaking out. I was mistaken, it's not the red Minicon port on Demolisher that has the firing mechanism. It's the gray one over on the other side. We'll see it more in, um, I'm not necessarily gonna say robot mode. We'll see it more in a little bit when we get back to Demolisher. For now, this is Blackout. No, he's not the helicopter that many fans know from the live action movies. He is. Also, not the G1 Minicon, but he is a heavily armored little dude. Now, this is the configuration that's kind of between Robot and his vehicle mode because this is the way he looks when he's plugged into the front of Demolisher. By right, this satellite piece, I suppose, should be up and the arms should be up like that. And he's his own little armored tank type of vehicle. Pretty cool, if you ask me. It's functional enough for a Minicon. What about the transformation, though, to Robot? Well, again, we put the arms then back down. We put this piece back down. And all you're doing then is unfolding the legs and straightening them up. And standing him up in his full Robot glory. So what about his scores? Well, his coloration is largely accurate, though I do feel like the lower legs and the head, for example, like where we see red hair, I feel like that should be more of a magenta type of color. I could be wrong, but that's the way I feel it's supposed to be. I'm gonna say it's about an eight because I do think the orange is pretty much where it should be. I think the color on the arms is pretty accurate for the most part, based on what I can recall of the character now. In terms of the transformation, he just unfolds, really. There's not much to it, but it's effective, I suppose, for what it is for a little guy. Like it, it, I, I'll also say it's an eight for what it is. Then the articulation. The head does nothing, nothing. The arms can go all the way around, no elbows or anything. They might be on little ball joints, ever so slight out to the side, maybe. Uh, the legs, that's as much of a knee back as you're getting, but yet there's, because of transformation, there's a, you know, a full knee forward and like you could do that. Um, I don't, three, four, I just popped out a piece here, which it does like to do that. Uh, three or four, I guess. Um, I don't know, overall, much like with Titan Masters and Prime Masters and Micro Masters and all the other little masters. I, he's a five or so. It's all right. It would be nice if there was a little further range of motion on the shoulders, but besides that, it's fine for what it is. Okay, so my mistake was that I said this one over here was the one that had like the firing mechanism. It's not. It's, can I get this all the way around? Yeah, I can get this all the way around. It's this one over here, the gray one. And when you take a Minicon, any Minicon, but we'll use Blackout since we have Blackout here, you can of course put him in right there. And when you first put him in, it like extends the kind of muzzle section, I suppose. And then as you push it, it fires both of those. Now there's, it seems like there's two separate um, positions to fire the top and the bottom missiles. And they're very, very close together. So when you fire one, you're probably gonna fire the other. Apparently, from what I understand, this was supposed to be a feature on both sides and it's not, it's only a feature on one side. So there you go, it's, it's, it is what it is. It's a feature, it is what it is. Okay, taking his little partner and laying him aside, we can get into the transformation for Demolisher here. And it's he's pretty sturdy, like I, I dig how sturdy he is. I don't have any instructions, I've done it a couple of times, let's hope I actually remember what I'm doing as we go through here. It's not hard, it's just trying to remember it now. So, we take the legs off, and if I'm not mistaken, yeah, we should be able to fold out the tread, and then we should be able to fold this all the way down, I thought. Yeah, you fold that all the way down, and then you 
fold out a foot. And you can do the same on the other side. Pull out a tread, fold out a foot, fold the tread all the way down around. And stand him up. I'm just going to kind of reposition things so we can do the upper body next. Okay, so now that we have the legs done and things repositioned, we can bring this and this down and around and we can turn those around. So now we have his little feet out front, we have his pelvis here, um, we have the hips rotated down. Beautiful. Then we can come to the arms and unfurl them and bring that arm down. And we can do the same over here, we unfurl it and we bring this arm down and past the hips. We split the body and we bring up Demolisher's head and I guess if you want you can fold in that seat piece as well. And boom, in the end here we have Demolisher in his robot mode. And here is our anti-aircraft missile tank in his robot mode looking no worse for the wear and I kind of like the silhouette, I like the look of the guy. Now, some people will probably know that, hey, I didn't show like the anti-aircraft base mode. All it really is is folding out the treads on his legs and then sort of leaving it in a standing stance. But it's dumb. It looks idiotic. So I didn't bother to show it. <clears throat> the transformation is fairly easy. I mean, you're kind of unfurled. I think the legs are genius. I really think the way the treads are done and the way the section over the treads folds up to become the thigh is kind of genius. Maybe not super duper functional, but kind of genius. The arms, they just fall down. There's so much more that could have been done there. And I kind of like the way you can split his chest open and lift his head up. I like that kind of sliding feature. I'm going to say overall, it's about, it's about a seven. It's all right. Because for as genius as the legs are, the way the arms are done is just sort of lazy, trash, and rubbish. Still, a 7 is an okay start, I guess. In terms of the coloration, well, we do have kind of correct coloration on the arms, though admittedly the green that's there should be a little more green than this beigey color. The chest is pretty accurate. Uh, the abdomen shouldn't be this like grayish color in here. It should also be kind of greenish. But the red is largely where it is. The way the legs is, is largely correct. Maybe a little more green would be a help, but it's, it's largely demolished. The only other thing that's not quite correct is that the face here is not that kind of beigey human color that it was on the animation. It's just black, though it is sculpted correctly. So you know it's demolished, there's no doubt. A couple of things are like a little bit off. Again, I'm going to say it's about, it's about eight. So we have about a seven and a half so far, I guess. Then we get to the articulation for the guy. We have no movement at the head. Doesn't seem like any movement at the head. The arms can go all the way around. And we do have an elbow, but no bicep swivel, no outward movement on the shoulders. Remember that this came years after Robots in Disguise and no bicep swivel, no outward movement on the arms. Uh, the legs could go all the way back, all the way forward, no thigh swivel. We do have a knee to 90 degrees. I guess the heel, because of transformation, can go down. Um, disappointing. Oh, he does have a waist, which is nice, but overall, Here's the thing. This is on loan to me by friend of the channel, Maximal Tan. And I had seen this guy for years and thought to myself, you know what, maybe I'll get Demolisher. Like, I like Demolisher. Maybe he is a Unicron Trilogy character that I wouldn't mind having, uh, a, you know, a plastic representation of. And this, to me, is 
Why will you not stand up now? This to me is his most iconic body type. So this is kind of the body type I'd like to have. Unfortunately, I also think it's kind of trash. There's no reason that you couldn't have worked in a bicep swivel there. There's no reason that we couldn't have had a hinge here at the shoulder for the shoulder to swing out. Here's the perfect example of a guy who could really use an update. So, for the coloration we had about a 7. For the transformation we had an 8. For the articulation, 5. Overall, he might be a 7. You put that with the 5 that is blackout, the overall score for this duo is honestly only about a 6. It's not... The materials feel good, it looks great, and it was built well. It just wasn't designed well, and that really hurts the functionality of it. Best I can give is a six. I don't know, man. I don't know. I expected better. I always thought that this might be one that I would pick up, but he could totally, totally be improved upon. Here he is next to Hot Shot, and this doesn't even look like the same line to me. I know it is, but it looks just as much of the same line to me as... Him next to Earthrise Wheeljack or even Siege Crosshairs. He's obviously in the locks, but what we have in Earthrise and Siege obliterates poor Demolisher. And here we are once again, and here's Demolisher. He looks so good. Like, he looks like something that would fit the molding, the detailing. Looks like something that would fit in, like, any modern generation's line. Actually, I feel like he fits better in Modern Generations line than he does in his own Armada line. But looks are only part of it. Does he display well? Yes. Is the transformation functional? Yes, I think the transformation is actually quite good. I wish a couple of different color choices were used. I wish the green was a little more green. I certainly wish his face was the correct color based on the animation. But, you know what, it's not the first time that we've had slight color variations. At least the molding is there and is correct. I'm going to do this sort of like a bit of a compliment sandwich. So in terms of his looks, yeah, this is Demolisher, hands down. And honestly, Blackout is one of the more fun and functional Minicons. Um, elbows, I guess, would be nice. Knees would be nice. But he's okay for a Minicon. At least he has some heft and size to him. And I kind of find his little vehicle mode fun. The articulation here is unforgivable. Knowing what could be done based on Beast Wars, Beast Machines, and... Robots in Disguise, Car Robots, why would they go back in time with designs? And that's what this feels like. This feels like they were taking a step back with designs and not doing as good. There's no thigh swivel. There's no bicep. The elbow is fine, but you can't, you can't even extend the shoulders. Out to, this feels more G1 than the three lines, if not more, that came before it. It's like we went from you know, G1, G2, then we had kind of awesome articulation and increased mobility through Beast Wars right through Robots in Disguise, and then they said, hey, let's go back to the limitations of G1. That's what this feels like to me. But, again, compliment sandwich, looks good, functions eh, but the transformation is kind of fantastic and genius. I love the way the legs were done, and honestly, I sort of understand why they don't have the thigh swivel, though it would be nice if somehow, some way, it could have been built in. I think I could have looked past the thigh swivel if the shoulders worked better. And there's no reason that you couldn't have put a bicep cut up here. There's no reason that you couldn't have put an outward hinge. None at all. Um, it's all right, but knowing what came before it and knowing this came later is kind of disappointing. At least it is to me. Let me know what you think about Demolisher. Is he one of your favorites or do you see the same sort of criticisms that I do? You know I love to hear from you guys and I appreciate it when you come by and give me some of your extremely valuable time. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, don't forget that there's a donate link down in the description. You can visit us on Patreon. You can also visit us on Teespring. All those, you know, methods ways of helping. Don't forget though, just by being here, just by being you, and just by visiting us here today, somehow, someway, each and every day, you do make a difference. Please hit the subscribe button, stick around, have some fun with us if you haven't done so already, and I look forward, man, to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live, I'll try that again, either in the live streams on Thursday nights, there you go, at the stop motion premieres of the old fashioned way, baby, right here inside the videos.